there. Welcome to a new episode of The Fortress of Filitude. In today's episode, I tried my hand at painting this mini bust of a pit fiend and trying to attempt sort of a marble effect. Uh, I'm not sure if I pulled it off entirely, but I am happy with the results. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of my trial and error, some different techniques that I tried, and uh, what I ended up finally settling on. Now, this uh, bust is from Loot Studios. Now, they're not a, not a sponsor, not anyone I'm affiliated with. I am a member of their Patreon. Uh, every month, they release 50 or more uh, STL files for 3D printing. And I joined them back in December, and their theme that month was Dying of the Light, uh, which was all devil and hellscape themed. Uh, this was a mini bust that was part of that release. It's actually a bust of the uh, Pit Fiend figure. Probably can't see it all that well, but uh, they've got some great stuff. If you're doing any 3D printing and you're looking at somebody to subscribe to, they've got some excellent models. I mean, all kinds of terrain, uh, all kinds of figures, player characters. I, I just I love this stuff, man. I can't I can't give them enough uh, enough praise. The models are great. Uh, they're pre-supported. I've not had problems printing any of them other than stuff I've done myself. Uh, when my build plate's not leveled, or if I haven't mixed the resin very well, or if the temperature's a little too cold in the room. But anyways, back to the mini bust. Uh, yeah, the marble pattern. Now, I'm not a professional miniature painter. <laughs> I'm not even a great miniature painter. On a scale of 1 to 10, in most cases, I'd probably give myself a 6. Uh, rarely, I might hit a 7 by accident. Uh, but like many people, I'm always trying to improve my technique, learn new ways of painting, and uh, just trying to up my game a little bit at a time. Most of what I paint is for table quality. You know, something that's going to look good on the table about arm's length uh, for our role-playing games. Uh, I'm not worried about trying to win any awards or enter any contests. Uh, and from arm's length distance, this guy looks pretty decent. Um, now, the mini busts are very popular. A lot of folks like to paint them up, and some people can do fantastic jobs with them. I wanted to see how well something like this would print while I was learning how to use my resin printer. And, uh, you know, I thought it'd be kind of cool to try out not something I'm going to do a lot of because, as you can probably see, I have more than enough stuff on my shelves already. I need more room for books and less items like this. Uh, but I thought I could make use of this as some scatter terrain. Uh, it could be a statue in a temple or some out-of-the-way place that some cult has. I mean, the Pit Fiend's kind of a generic creature, uh, at least in terms of the way it looks. I mean, this can be a devil, it can be a demon. It can be some kind of evil god. Uh, so I can get a lot of use out of it and uh, use it in a lot of different ways. So let's check out the rest of the video and I'll show you how I painted it up and some of the pitfalls I ran into in the process. So initially I had painted this guy almost a solid color red. I thought I would use that as my base color and then go over it with the cotton technique where you stretch out a cotton ball or another piece of cotton and then airbrush your other colors. And I thought, no, maybe I really should just go with the dark color first. So I repainted it in black and then kind of went over it with some light gray. You know, I looked at a couple of different tutorials online, especially on YouTube, to see how to paint a marble effect using an airbrush. And uh, I thought I'd give it a try to see if I could pull it off. So I, I didn't have any cotton balls, but I had some cotton batting that I had from... Uh, some chairs I reupholstered a few years ago. So I used it. I stretched it out, wrapped it around this dude. And uh, yeah, I don't think it was really the right kind of stuff, or I just didn't spread it out enough. Uh, but I gave it a try and uh, then started airbrushing. I, I did the red uh, just to see what kind of effect would come through. I was hoping it would give me that lined, marbled look. Uh, it didn't. <laughs> when I ended up pulling the. Uh, cotton off, which you'll see here in a little bit in the video, it uh, it didn't really give me that marble effect. It just kind of bled through and, and gave me some red blotches. 
Yeah, you can you can almost barely see the red there. I think I really needed better material to use, like an actual cotton ball that I could really stretch out the right way. I tried it on the back. Um, you know, I tried stretching it out a little more. And uh, while this didn't really work the way I wanted it to, it did kind of give me some red shading. It kind of blended into the black and the gray, which ended up working because it kind of gave me a nice... Uh, a blended, mottled kind of uh, mottled color between the reds and the grays. So then I thought I would try, you know, something a little different. I tried kind of going in reverse, sprayed some more red on there, then thought, okay, then I'll, I'll go back and use this uh, plastic bag technique or cling wrap. I saw a few tutorials for that. You basically Put the airbrush paint on there pretty thick while it's still wet you put the plastic on there you get it down really tight you know press it down with your fingers move it around a little bit and it's uh, supposed to kind of create that swirled marbled look so it actually kind of worked I mean the uh, the the effects hard to see there with the dark color uh, but it, it worked good on the flat surface However, when I tried it on the contoured surface where all the detail is, it, uh, it didn't really work the same way because there was just no way to get that plastic tight and to get it to cling to that surface and, and, and <laughs> just get the right effect. I did give it another try though. You know, I just couldn't get it tight enough. As you can see, I just ended up with uh, a blend of red and gray and black on this dude. So I thought, okay, I'm going to have to do it by brush. And so I, you know, I mixed some colors. I used my base red color and then used some pink to kind of blend them together to get a, a lighter red. Just to paint on the, the marbled lines and streaks. I started on the back. Um, I'm not real happy with the way the back looks. So, you know, at this point I was starting to kind of doubt if this was really going to work or not, or if this was a good idea. But when I got to the front of it, I was pleasantly surprised um, how well it worked. I don't know if it's just because of the detail and the mixture of colors, but it, it seemed to look a lot better where there was actual sculpted detail on the model. So I definitely learned that if I'm going to use an airbrush, um, you know, on a flat surface using that uh, cling wrap or a plastic bag, that would definitely work. So something like miniature bases or large pieces of terrain that are mostly flat, uh, that technique would work pretty well. But something like this that's just got a lot of curves and a lot of detail and a lot of crevices, um, the brush technique's going to work better. Now I'll probably go back at some point point, try something with an actual cotton ball and uh, spread it out a little better and see how it works. Um, but for something like this on the mini bust, uh, the, the brushed on lines uh, seem to work a lot better. And it's a good lesson. I mean, not everything is always going to work the way you expected it to, but it can always be salvaged. There's there's always a way to, to fix it. Always a new technique. So, you know, I kind of learned what to do, what not to do, and what I would do a little bit differently next time. And in the end, I was really happy with what I ended up with. I mean, I, I do like the way it looks from the front. I think it's a pretty cool effect. I went over and, you know, added another lighter shade of color. I thinned it out a little bit so it wasn't uh, too dark, but I wanted to tone down the, the, the pinkish color a little bit. So I just kind of went over all those lines a second time. And in the end, yeah, I've got a, a sort of a blended, mottled, marbled look. Not perfect, not the best, but uh, you see the back didn't turn out really good. I'm not not real happy with it, but the front of it the front of it looks exactly the way I wanted it to. 
And then I just sealed it with a uh, gloss varnish so it'll be kind of shiny and polished looking. And I'll have a nice piece of uh, scatter terrain for my tabletop role-playing games. So if you liked the video, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and uh, we'll see you next time. The Fortress of Filitude.